Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Park Life. It's a Boxing Day special against Forest Green Rovers. Wherever you're watching this one, whether you're in the ground or at home, we hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Santa matey, just give a point or even all three to City. Been an awful good club, Santa matey, so hurry to St James Park tonight. Think of all the games we've missed. Think of how we've all been going round the twist. Next year we could feel oh so good if you check off our Christmas list. Santa matey, we're grateful fans can watch us this time. That's fine, at the ground or online, Santa matey, but hurry to St James Park tonight. Santa matey, just want to mention one little thing. Fans in, safe and in numbers, oh please Santa matey, just hurry to St James Park tonight. Come and see our Christmas tree, full of decorations from ECFC. We really do all cheer for you. Let's see if you support City. Santa matey, there's one little thing we'd really love. Our club, full of us in 21. Santa matey, so hurry to St James Park tonight. Please hurry to St James Park tonight. I wish you all a very Merry Christmas because I won't speak to you again until Boxing Day. Merry Christmas. Coming up on today's show, we speak to our two favourite tailors, Matt and Jake, the bard of ECFC, Rob Casey. And we also take a look back at previous encounters with Forest Green. But since there was no game last weekend, we start with a look back at all 15 of City's December goals so far. Started really well, Exeter, right on the front foot. Fight back in once again. They're looking for a flag, it's not going to come, but the opening goal will from Ryan Bowman. Plays scored 13 last season, he was their top scorer. Just before halftime would be a real blow to Grimsby. It's it towards Williams, oh, he will squeeze in, and he's got another one. And the flag staying down here. Randall, oh, and it will work out for Matt J. And that's four. As Cheltenham looked to build from the back, but it's been uh, won back by Exeter, and it's Archie Collins with the surging run forward, and his shot is deflected, and his shot is in. And we've only played four minutes, and the visitors have taken the lead. Just to allow the big guns to get up from the back, here is our Nicky Law. Oh, good footwork from the substitute. Gets the cross in, and it is 3-2. And dying stages of this match. He's given away to uh, Nicky Law with a bit of space to run into and Law is still going and he finds the bottom corner and it is game on. Here comes, bounces down, could be still be dangerous here. Atangana! Equaliser for the home side. Lead from Bowman, flicks on towards Randall and Exeter into the penalty area here. That's a fine touch and a wonderful finish. After just eight minutes, Exeter lead. Just 18 minutes gone, and they lead 2 0. Matt Jay puts the ball into the corner. And a long way to come, having travelled here to the southwest of England. Giving the ball away carelessly here. A chance for a third, perhaps, for Exeter. And Bowman takes it. Just 27 minutes into the game, and it's now 3 0. have enjoyed what they've seen so far. Looking to add a fourth, perhaps, here. Twisting run. Nice layoff, two, and there is goal four. Taylor with a wonderful strike. Celebrated in front of the home fans here. Taylor, captain. Lifts the ball on, and away here goes Randall. Randall's into the area. Unselfish play. Lays on the ball to Bowman. Bowman with his hat trick. Second hat trick of the season, a hat trick that makes it 5 0 for Exeter City. Exeter have more goals than anyone else across the four divisions in England. Something here. Hang on a minute, they're into the area. What a start to the second period. Jake Taylor in, hopes beyond Belshaw. As you know, during the week, the club did announce some positive coronavirus tests within 
the playing environment. And I think when things hit close to home like that, it's important to reiterate everything that we have in place here to keep you safe on a match day. Wear a mask, wash your hands, all the simple things, but also please make sure you stay in your spots, your seat, and all the like to ensure that for as long as you're allowed back in the ground, you are safe and secure. Between our last match here against Harrogate Town and Boxing Day, there will have been 11 days. Here are the thoughts of manager Matt Taylor about how the preparations for this one have been going. Look, it, it might have worked in our favour, the fact that the Stevenage game was off. Um, it meant the players were off for the weekend. We had to extend that till, till Monday as well. Um, so they had a three-day break whilst we got them all, all tested. Um, and then the results came back like they did. Um, and we, we, you know, it was the right decision to test the players and the staff as well, um, especially when you get positive results. Um, and then we've had a few more players and, and staff members in, in isolation off the back of family members falling ill and getting tested through the NHS. So uh, a strange time as a manager, um, one way it's difficult to prepare for. I'm, I'm sure the players looked after themselves uh, well enough on those days off um, and they've come in and trained well this week. Unfortunately, we've not been back in the, the buildings sort of speak, in terms of using the facilities, but we've, we've got back out on the grass pitches um, and done a bit of training. Be the same again tomorrow in terms of training Christmas Day morning um, with a view for Boxing Day. And, and we're looking forward to it. Um, always feel like big games around the Christmas time, around the festive period. Um, usually played in front of big attendances and with a good atmosphere. It's, it's such a shame we can only get 2,000 in at the park on, on Boxing Day. Um, but hopefully we'll give them a little bit of a, a festive cheer. cheer. I mean, having the fans back in, I think we're so lucky now. I think there's only a 10 or so in, in the EFL that can still have fans. I think in a time, especially at Christmas time, when so many people have been isolated, not able to see family, I think it's important, isn't it, that we try and put on that really good performance for them and, and give them a sense of normality slightly. Yeah, let's be honest, it's been, it's been a rotten time for, for everyone. Um, and we're lucky in the industry that we work in that we can keep on playing and, and, and doing something we love. Um, and we'll always appreciate that. Um, and Boxing Day will be we're part of that because, you know, we'll be playing football, but we'll be playing for, football in front of our fans. And we know they've missed it. Um, and for them to be out on, on Boxing Day at a game, is, is, it's a tradition. It's, it's in their blood. It's something they've done for countless number of years. Um, and hopefully we can repay them with a, a performance of sorts. Uh, and a win as well. And um, we're playing a couple of very good good teams over the next few days. Um, and we'll have to be at our best to pick anything, uh, to get anything out of those games. Um, but like I say, these are the games which you look forward to. You look forward to the Boxing Day fixture, the New Year's fixture um, you play at the start of January. Um, because these are the ones which generally have, have the most attention. They'll get even more attention in the next few days because we're playing two teams at the top of the league. On the score sheet last time we played was the man we all love to call El Capitano. Here is Jake Taylor, who's talking about the importance of picking up three points against a fellow promotion rival. These are the games that if you ever you know, want to be successful, you've got to you know, play teams like this and do well against them. So, yeah, like you said, it's a really good marker for to see you know, where the squad is at. Um, and everyone's really looking forward to it. Obviously, you know, Boxing Day is an extra little extra you know, special. Um, so, yeah, we're really looking forward to it and fingers crossed we can get a decent result and, and a good performance. I mean, then after that one, it's another tough one away at Newport who, you know, top of the league. I mean, they've only, they lost the last couple, but, you know, they're such a strong side and it's going to be another really... I mean, it, in, t in general, it's a huge week for the club, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. It's, you know, it's not, you know, season-defining for sure. Um, they're two really good teams, two teams that... Um, you know, if we do well against, we'll um, obviously go up the table, which is where we want to be. So um, two games that are important for us, uh, two games we're really looking forward to. Obviously, you want to play in the big games um, and these two are definitely big games for us. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it and definitely a good mark to see, you know, how we're going to do this season. And look, back at home, I think it's important after you know, the week in the national picture and Christmas plans have been cancelled that we just, you know, try and put a smile on the face of the fans that are here on Boxing Day. Yeah, for sure. I think that's, you know, what we want to do the most as well. It's so good to have them back. Um, you know, obviously being in a really difficult period of time for, for everyone. So if we can, you know, put a smile on a few people's faces by, you know, getting a good result and a good performance, um, then obviously that's what we're going to aim to do. So, yeah. Definitely um, a good a good game for everyone and, and hopefully we can come out on top. As one of our closest league games this season and for the past few as well, games between City and Forest Green are rarely dull. Here is club historian Will Barrett taking a look back at some of the best. This afternoon's Boxing Day clash with Forest Green Rovers marks our final home game 
of 2020. And over the course of this extraordinary year, the team have played 22 games at the park in all competitions, winning 15 and scoring 50 goals. Somewhat coincidentally, Forest Green were also our very first opponents of 2020 as City travelled to the New Lawn on New Year's Day to face the Green Devils in Skybet League 2. In that game, City got off to the perfect start where Nigel Atangana scored a tidy goal from the edge of the box. And despite the Frenchman seeing red early in the second period, a resilient defensive display and a superb penalty save from Johnny Maxted saw the Grecians kick off 2020 with all three points. Looking further into what is a short historic record, Forest Green are a team that we have a very good record against with 11 wins, eight draws and just two defeats in our 21 games so far. And despite four of those matches being goalless draws, the teams have exchanged 58 goals since we met for the first time in 2002. Five of those 58 goals came in our most recent encounter when City got the edge on today's opponents with a fine 3-2 win in the Papa John's Trophy back in September. Here's hoping that all Grecians will get to enjoy a similar game and result this afternoon as a belated Christmas gift from Matt Taylor and the Mighty Boys in red and white. Let's rewind the clocks back to September 2017 when City recorded their first ever league win in their first ever league meeting with Forest Green Rovers. It was a 3-1 win at the Innocent New Lawn, including a first Grecian goal for Pierce Sweeney. Every time he scores in front of the big bank, that's an excellent present for the fans. But what is the best present Jake Taylor has ever received? And what is his favourite part of a Christmas dinner? Here is El Capitano's festive questions. What have you asked for for Christmas? <laughs> Did... Scott actually asked you to ask me that. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is going to sound pathetic, but a new laundry basket. Because my other one's broke, so I need a new laundry basket. And what? What better time to get a new one than Christmas? Sounds good. Difficult to wrap up, though. Yeah, I'm not good at that anyway. <laughs> what is the best present you've ever had? Best present I've ever had. <sighs> to be fair, I'm just, I'm just, I like, you know, new boxes and new socks around Christmas really help me out, to be fair. So I'm, I'm extremely happy with just the little things like that. What's the worst present you've ever had? Probably a laundry basket that I'm going to get this year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> what's the best bit of a Christmas dinner? 
Uh, Yorkshire puddings for me. What is the best Christmas film? I went to watch Elf in the cinema the other day with my daughter. I think she loves it, and it's. I think I've watched it about twenty times so far this Christmas. So Elf's definitely up there. I've not actually watched it this year. I usually do. That's sloppy from you. Did watch the two Home Alones though, one after the other. So. Yeah. <laughs> What's the best Christmas song? Best Christmas song. Um. I'm not into my Christmas songs, to be fair. Just go, oh, just go jingle be, bells. No, there must be jingle one bells. Bells in the car. Yeah. The, the worst bit about being a footballer at Christmas. Um, being around other people who are really enjoying themselves with their Christmas dinner and drinking however much they'd like to drink the night before, when when you know you've got to go and play a game the next day. So I'm looking forward to. When football finishes, that'll be one thing I'm looking forward to, is enjoying my Christmas properly. And finally, what's your best memory of Boxing Day football? I think I scored on Boxing Day for Cheltenham years ago. I think I did. <laughs> I might have to double check that, but I'm pretty sure I scored in a win for Cheltenham years ago. That was a good Boxing Day for me. Well, we'll have to make it this Saturday instead, I think. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. After a short interruption to their season, Exeter City women were back in action in both Cup and League in the last fortnight. Here is David Gribble with a lowdown on all the latest. Yeah, it's been good. Um, real disappointment in the FA Cup. We played against Cheltenham. Um, it was a, a really close encounter. Both teams put a lot into it. Um, we, we, we got level, which took it into extra time and unfortunately just missed out on penalties. But uh, it was a, a really entertaining game, um, a, a really an afternoon when neither side deserved to lose. Um, and another another very entertaining game, uh, Sunday just gone uh, against Larkle. Uh, again, City playing a lot of good possession football, um, but un unfortunately they found themselves in, in a position where they were chasing the game 2-0 down. Um, and another last minute goal to rescue the point. And also to rescue that point from having 10 men as well was quite impressive yes yeah the should say, sorry I should say 10 women 10 women yeah, yes. yeah. Um, so yeah it was uh, it was a difficult situation to be in that it went to 2-1 um, and then Exeter really had all the momentum it looked like they were going to not only maybe pull level but go on and win it um, unfortunately uh, Georgie got sent off and uh, you know it meant it was uh, really difficult to try try and get back in the game but in fairness, they still had the vast majority of it, still kept trying to play their football, didn't, didn't change in philosophy, and uh, Phoebe Baker came up with a, a last-minute strike and a fantastic goal straight in the top corner, and, uh, yeah, got, got them a, a deserved point. Just going back to that FA Cup run, I mean, it's something they should be proud of this year as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's really good. It's the first time they've got to, to the first round for a while. Um, unfortunately, I think Cheltenham have knocked them out three of the last four years, so... Despite all the games being very, very close, they just they just don't seem to be able to, to get past them. But uh, yeah, a, a good run. Um, they knocked Swindon out, who are in the same league as them. Um, knocked out AEK Bocco, who are a, a team a few divisions below. But yeah, they, they were unfortunate not to get to round two, which would have been you know really fantastic. And uh, in terms of crowds, has it been promising to see quite a few people come along and support them? Definitely, a lot. A lot of the games have been at been at Exwick this season due to due to the weather and uh, yeah the crowds have, have been good all season a lot of people that started to come just out of interest with there not being a lot of live football about um, you know have, st have stuck loyal to the team I think when, once you come and watch the team you realise that the the standard of football that they play is is, is really very very good indeed and uh, you know it's it's a very technical based style um, there's no kind of hitting it up to the the big person um, you, you know there's there's a lot of possession in, in the way that City play and uh, yeah it's it's always entertaining it's uh, it's very rare that I sit down to write a match report and think not a lot happened there so yeah it's always always good value I mean I 
now enter another break as well for the festive period. I guess in some ways that must be a little frustrating for the players, having only come back for two weeks to have yet another two weeks off, and it's quite a disjointed season. So. Yeah, it's it's just been such a frustrating year with the season suspended, uh, sort of March time, then eventually getting back to playing football end of September, and um, you know then there was another month off with the sort of covid restrictions have come back for two weeks now another christmas break so it's just been stop start all the time but i know they work incredibly hard on on the fitness aspect to to make sure that you know their fitness levels are right for when they do come back i'm sure that'll be the same over christmas and when they get going again in january hopefully then um i've no doubt that the team will be ready for for the challenges ahead and we were chatting before this but i mean with the changes in the tier system and how how it's all working through the government at the moment. I guess there are concerns that, again, it could be another very disjointed or affected season. Yeah, I think uh, also there's the, the teams in, in the league, in the National League, that, that extra are in. You've got Maidenhead, two, two teams in Southampton, uh, Chesham. They're all sides on, you know, on the east of the country that will be affected by the, you know, the current restrictions where that leaves us going into the sort of the second half of the season and it's it's really hard to say but you just hope that um you know those restrictions will be kind of limited and at least the teams will be able to to play football whether that will be with spectators or not it's hard to say but uh yeah it could be uh it, it could be a, a difficult second half of the season to map out really in terms of fixtures and I guess finally, who who's up next after the festive break? For the so they're, they're back on the 3rd of January, which is a, a Devon Cup tie against Fenerton, which is at home. Um, so that, that, that should be an interesting game. Exeter got to the, the final of, of the Cup last year and then couldn't play the final because everything was suspended. So I'm sure they'll be hoping to, to get to that final again and ho hope, hopefully win it. Following your heart and spirit in soul you make every tackle score every goal you're part of it wherever you are in the world from the first minute until the last kick victories heartbreaks you're part of the fabric the passion devotion supercharging emotion for you there is only one abiding loyalty togetherness that is second to none. Follow every kick, every tackle, every goal. With access to live stream games and match day commentary. With coverage spanning the globe. Behind the scene content, newsletters and match highlights. There is no better way for you to get closer to your club. And with I follow sales supporting them, there's no better way to show your love. And you can't be there be there with I follow. On Park Life, we love to speak to the fans, and don't you know it? Here is Rob Casey, the ECFC poet. Wow, I'm not sure he'd be proud of that one, but uh, his job is safe. Here he is talking all things City. So, Rob, also known as the Bard of ECFC to your adoring fan base, uh, how is it going, and are you excited for Christmas? Indeed, yeah. Um... Yeah, it's finally an opportunity to get a bit of a, a break. So my my day job, I'm a I'm a key worker. So I've uh, been been working quite quite long and quite hard over this last term or so. So quite quite keen to get a bit of a Christmas break and to to watch a lot of football, hopefully. And uh, let's talk Bard, I suppose. I mean, some people might not know much about it. You've been doing it for the past is it three or four years now. It's, yeah, uh, I'm in the fifth year of doing it, so just over four years. Uh, I think it was, uh, yeah, autumn 2016 when I started doing it. I had no idea how long I was going to keep doing it for. But, um, yeah, it's been it's been a really great experience. I've, I've loved doing it. I've racked up over 100 poems that I've written for the club. Um, we had an event down at the, uh, the Quay. Uh, it ended up being a virtual event. Um, a couple of weeks ago and I tried to add a little sort through everything that I'd written and there were yeah there were over 100 poems there so it's been uh, yeah it's been good. Do you find you're running out of material yet or do you think there's plenty more stones not unturned? 
to be honest, I thought I was running out of material in the first season after I've written like the first few poems. I thought, okay, well, what, where do I go now? And then more and more stuff keeps keeps coming up, and I, I'm you know I'm in the same position now that I was of of you know just like any person who does kind of creative work. It's like, well, what what am I going to do next? And then suddenly something happens, and that's I think that's the beauty of of the game itself and being a supporter is that's what I'm writing about. I'm writing about the experiences of being a football fan mm. um, and and about the game. And it's, you know, it's as unlimited as the human experience is, as far as I'm concerned, because you're, you're writing about what it means to be to be a fan and, and, and all aspects of it, from the anticipation of a game to being at the game, to how you feel afterwards, to where things are in the season, to the ups and downs of your, your kind of own emotional landscape really and trying to explore the whole range of, of of the experience of what it is to be a football supporter but as a you know just as a person and you take your poems can be quite topical as well can't they around current situations and that and I guess you've had quite a lot to work with recently as well given current events yeah quite so I mean 2020 has been a fairly unforgettable year but um yeah I try to I try to be current where I can um, and then also try and produce pieces that, that kind of capture things that um, are maybe a little bit more universal. But yeah, at the same time, I like to try and to, to be to be topical where where possible. And indeed, the football calendar throws up um, certain events. So we recently had the Rainbow Laces football versus homophobia campaign. Uh, so I did something um, for that. But then also, you know, when there are kind of key games coming up um, and with a little bit of encouragement from yourself I'm always happy to, to produce something Christmassy themed uh, whenever that comes up for the Boxing Day game. I was just going to mention that actually and um, hopefully by the time people watch that they'll have seen this year's uh, festive video. Um, do, you want to, do you want to tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind it? Yeah so I've done, done a few uh, with you over the last few years so we've had Merry Christmas Grecian ones uh was the twas the day after Christmas and I can't remember which other ones we've done now but um I just fancied doing doing my own version of of the Eartha Kit classic Santa Baby um but in the same way that kind of Michael Buble has sort of changed gender roles a little bit and his is kind of Santa Buddy I went with uh, Santa Matey um because i thought it was probably a good time to kind of reflect on what we haven't had this year and what we're really looking forward to in 2021 so yeah it's it's meant to be a bit of fun at christmas but at the same time kind of recognizing this transition that we've that we're hopefully in from not being able to get to the games to hopefully having a little bit more fans in and uh, something approaching being able to all get together and enjoy watching watching the game at St James Park or in some cases carrying on the experience of watching it from home uh, online. One thing I guess I have to mention, um, something I stumbled upon in Waterstones a couple of months ago and sent you, yeah. you know, not everyone is a fan of the Bard of ECFC, are they? And uh, I can't remember what was titled, was it like nine reasons not to support the 92 or something? So I've got that book now. Yeah, Kevin Kevin Day, the comedian who also does quite a lot with the BBC uh, around football, football focus and match of the day, um, has written a book called Who Are You? Um, Reasons Not to Support the 92 Football League Clubs. Uh, and it's sort of a bit of a comic tour of all of the league clubs in English football, uh, where he has a bit of a, a, a poke at, at all of the clubs, including his own. Um but yeah, there's there's a little section in there. There's a, there's a, there's a paragraph um, about how when he discovered that Exeter City has uh, has a, has, has a, its own resident poet, the Bard of Exeter City Football Club, uh, and it was actually quite nice that he he personally approves, but he wasn't sure how to tell his dad because his dad is very much a a kind of a, a football traditionalist who who you know sees things as, as should always be the same way. Uh, but then ultimately, yeah, he listed as one of his top three reasons not to support Exeter City. Uh, but me, basically. Um, but I think I've made it up to him. So um, I've, I've 
written and dedicated a poem to Kevin Hunter's dad, which apparently he liked. So we're on talking terms again now. Baby steps, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I'm honoured. I'm honoured to, to be one of the reasons why, you know, why you shouldn't support Exeter City Football Club. Um, but, you know. <laughs> um, just, I guess we should probably briefly talk about football as yeah. kind of what we're doing. Um, Boxing Day games are always, you know, a fun day for the family. Um, a shame that capacities are going to be so limited for um, Saturday, but I mean, playing Forest Green, it should be a, a good game, shouldn't it? Them sitting second and City in sixth. That's it. That's it. Yeah, it's a top of the table clash, which we seem to have um, quite quite a lot of. I'm not sure how often we get one of those at Christmas as a, as a Boxing Day uh, fixture, but um, yeah, I don't think people will be in the world. That hopefully the staff and players aren't kind of too much in festive spirit and actually treat this as. as you know, it's not quite a six-pointer because there's too many points between them, but it, it could make a real difference in terms of getting City back up into the top three, which has obviously got to be the aim. Um, although I think we're in a we're in a great position. Uh, I've got to say, it, you know, at the start of the season, I had hope, but I wasn't necessarily expecting us to be kind of fighting um, in, at this stage. Um, and, and here we are, and anything feels possible, particularly the way that we've been playing and some of the, the players that have really broken through and just the whole whole way in which the team kind of fits together. I'm, I'm just quite excited, whatever position we, we're in. I think if going into the kind of the final stages of the season, anything can happen, we can put a run together. But uh, yeah, it's looking really, really promising. And I hope that we have a good, a kind of a good winter run in. Absolutely. I mean, it's and it's become you know one of our most local matches as well with Forest Green. So um, you know, there's always that side. You know, it's not a rival or anything, but there's always that side that it is one of your localish games, isn't it? Yeah, it helps, particularly with some of the other local clubs, Cheltenham, um, doing so well. Um, yeah, things are looking kind of on the up for the West Country. I won't talk about Plymouth, but uh, Torquay, a top of the of the Sorry, I still call it the conference. I can't. I still can't get my head around it being called anything else. But um, but yeah, in terms of yeah, West Country clubs, I think there's there's a lot of reason to be optimistic across across the region, which I think is only going to be good in the future for um, for, for more exciting clashes like this one. Absolutely, and I guess you know I'll have to push you for your score prediction to finish off. How do you see this uh, this one going? I mean, I, I, the thing is, right? I want I want to be honest and and sit on the fence, but then I don't want to sit on the fence. <laughs> um, so actually, I'm not. Uh, so I was going to say one all, but no, I think um, I don't know. I think funny things happen on Boxing Day. So um, Forest Green are in really good position and good form at the moment, but so are we, and we can beat anyone on our day. So I'm going to go. Do you know what, I'm going to go three one Ooh. to City. That'd be a good, that would be a good boxing day, that wouldn't it? Absolutely. It'd be lovely, yeah. Brilliant. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak to us and uh, we'll let you get back to your creative. You know, so I'm assuming that's where the poem magic happens, is it in this room? Uh, this is where stuff gets typed up, usually. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I, I usually just write straight onto my phone is when I kind of do my, my drafting. Um, and then, yeah, then there's kind of a little bit of tweaks happen. Um, after that, but yeah, this is this is the study, the nerve center of the operation. Yeah, the uh, the bard layer. <laughs> well, thanks, Rob, and we'll hope to see you soon. And you take care. That's all we've got time for on this week's Park Life. Thank you so much for joining us as ever. If you're not one of the lucky few to have a ticket for Boxing Day, make sure you tune in on iFollow. Season ticket holders can, of course, watch on there for free, and it's ten pounds for a match pass. Until then, I'm going to belt out Mariah, drink a few bucks fizz and stuff my face with turkey. I'll see you on Boxing Day and up the zinny!